Spacebus is a satellite bus produced at the Cannes Mondelu Space Center in France by Thales Alenia Space. Spacebuses are typically used for geostationary communication satellites, and 74 have been launched since development started in the 1980s. Spacebus was originally produced by Aerospatia and later passed to Alcatel Alenia Space. In 2006, it was sold to Thales Group as Thales Alenia Space. The first Spacebus satellite, Arabsat 1A, was launched in 1985. Since then, 74 have been launched, with one more completed, and six outstanding orders. The launch of the 50th Spacebus satellite, Star 1C1, occurred in November 2007. It was a Spacebus 3000B3, launched by an Ariane 5 rocket flying from the Guiana Space Center in Kourou, French Guiana. Several variants have been built, the early Spacebus 100 and Spacebus 300, followed by the Spacebus 2000, optimized for launch on the Ariane 4 carrier rocket, and the subsequent modular Spacebus 3000 and 4000 series, designed for use with the Ariane 5 rocket. History Aerospatia had produced a number of satellites, including Symphony, with the German company Messerschmitt. On 9 December 1983, the two companies signed the Franco-German Spacebus Agreement. The Spacebus designation was first applied to satellites which were under construction by Aerospatia when the program started. These included three satellites for Arabsat, which became the Spacebus 100 series, and five further satellites, two for Deutsche Bundespost, two for Telediffusion de France, and the Swedish space corporation's Tele-X, which became the Spacebus 300 series. Later series names were followed by a number indicating the approximate mass of the bus in kilograms. Spacebus designations were not applied retrospectively to satellites which had already been launched. Architecture Spacebus satellites consist of a satellite bus, which provides power, propulsion, and other subsystems necessary for the satellite's operation, and a payload which is customizable depending on the customer's requirements. The bus was designed to be adaptable to perform various missions, however, as of 2009, only communications satellites have been ordered. It was also designed to be adaptable when the capacity of launch systems increased. The bus is made of carbon fiber with a composite honeycomb structure. It contains fuel tanks, equipment needed to interface with a carrier rocket, and other critical systems. Panels are attached to the outside of the structure with externally mounted equipment, including the solar panels, payload, and engine. The payload, which is developed separately from the bus, takes up three panels. Once it has been outfitted with transponders or other equipment, it is transported to Cannes Mondelu, where it is integrated onto the bus. The satellites are powered by rigid solar panels. Several configurations are used depending on the amount of power that the satellite is expected to require. The batteries used to store this power are produced by the Belgian company ETCA. Early satellites used nickel hydrogen batteries, while later spacecraft use lithium ion batteries. Spacebus satellites use bipropellant, liquid fueled chemical engines to achieve their orbits, and subsequently perform station keeping. Electric propulsion was used on the Stenter and Astra 1K satellites, both of which were subsequently involved in launch failures. Spacebus NEO will be an electric propulsion satellite. A three axis stabilization system is used for attitude control. Topic: Models. Spacebus satellites were developed to be compatible with a large number of available carrier rockets, particularly the Ariane family of rockets. As the performance of the Ariane has increased, the satellites have become larger to take advantage of this increased capacity. Topic: Spacebus 100. Three Spacebus 100 satellites were produced for Arabsat, to serve the 22 members of the Arab League. One of the solar panels on the first satellite, Arabsat 1A, failed to deploy resulting in reduced power to the spacecraft. 
This, combined with gyroscope issues, resulted in it spending most of its operational lifespan as a reserve satellite. Topic: <laughs> Spacebus 300. Five direct-to-home television satellites were built using the Spacebus 300 bus, which provided 4.3 kilowatts, 5.8 horsepower of electrical power. Topic: <laughs> Spacebus 2000. The Spacebus 2000 series was developed to use additional capacity provided by the Ariane 4. Its solar panels generated 3.5 kilowatts, 4.7 horsepower of power. Topic: <laughs> Spacebus 3000. The Spacebus 3000 was introduced around the time the Ariane 5 entered service. Spacebus 3000 satellites have masses ranging between 2 to 6 tons, 2.0 to 5.9 long tons, 2.2 to 6.6 short tons and produce between 5 and 16 kilowatts, 6.7 and 21.5 horsepower of electrical power. Increasingly larger payload fairings allowed larger spacecraft to be produced. In 1991, the Satellite Alliance was formed, bringing together Aerospatia, Alenia, and Space Systems. Laurel, the first version of the Spacebus 3000 to be produced was the Spacebus 3000A, which was originally developed for Arabsat. 3000A satellites were also ordered by Xin Satellite of Thailand and China's Sino Satellite Communications Company. 123000B2 satellites were ordered. Five of these were ordered by Utilsat for their W series, one of which later became Utilsat 28A. A sixth order from Utilsat was for Utilsat 8 West A Nordic Satellite AB, a Scandinavian company which later became Ces Sirius, ordered Sirius 2, a replacement for the Spacebus 300 based Telex satellite. Spanish satellite operator Hespasat ordered two satellites, and Arabsat ordered one satellite, Arabsat 3A. The final two satellites were ordered by the German Bundeswehr and were launched on 1 October 2009, and in May 2010, respectively, nine B-3 satellites were ordered, three for Utilsat, two for Star-1 of Brazil, GE-12 for GE Americam, Turksat-2A for Turksat, and the Stenta Experimental Communications Satellite for CNES. Stenta was lost in a launch failure on the maiden flight of the Ariane 5 ECA. Galaxy 17 was successfully launched in 2007 for Intelsat. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Spacebus 4000. The Spacebus 4000 series was derived from the 3000 series but featured upgraded avionics. The voltage of the electrical system was increased from 50 volts to 100 volts, and an integrated on-board computer, designed to be more flexible than previous versions, was added. It was also the first satellite bus to be equipped with an attitude and orbit control system with star trackers designed for use in geostationary orbit. The B series used the same basic structure as the 3000 series. The C version had a base measuring 2.2 by 2.0 meters, 7.2 feet times 6.6 feet. Eight Spacebus 4000B2 satellites have been ordered: Turksat 3A for Turksat, 46 for Telenor of Norway, Nilisat 201 for Nilisat of Egypt, Athena Fidus for the French and Italian space agencies CNES and ASI, and SICRAL2 for the Italian Ministry of Defence and the French Defence Procurement Agency (DGA). A contract worth about 295 million euros in total. Korea's R5A and KOREASAT7 for KT. SAT and Telkom 3S for PT Telkom Indonesia. Spacebus 4000B3 satellites are 3.7 meters, 12 feet in height and generate 8.5 kilowatts, 11.4 horsepower of power. So far, five have been ordered, including two for the French Delegation Générale Paul Armand and two for Raskomstar QAF. The fifth, Palapa D1 for Indosat, uses the ATAR free configuration, and was launched by a Long March 3B in September 2009, but was initially placed in a low orbit. Thales Alenia Space made corrections allowing the satellite to reach the planned geostationary transfer orbit on 3 September. It finally reached geostationary orbit on 9 September. 
It is now undergoing on-orbit testing upon its arrival at 113 degrees east about mid-September, where it will be used to provide communications to Asia and Australia. It has enough fuel for 10 years of service, according to Reynold Sesnick, president of Thales Alenia Space, instead of the planned 15 years due to the orbit raising maneuvers. The first Rascom satellite, Rascom QAF 1, suffered a propulsion system failure during its first apogee maneuver on 21 December 2007. It was confirmed to have reached its final geostationary orbit at a longitude of 2.85 degrees east on 4 February 2008, but with only two years of expected operational life, compared to the 15 expected prior to launch. On 9 September 2008, the Rascom QAF-1R satellite was ordered to replace it, also based on the 4000B3 bus. The Spacebus 4000C1 has a height of 4 meters (13 feet) and is capable of generating 8.5 kilowatts (11.4 horsepower) of electricity. The only C1 to have been ordered so far is Korea's R5 for Korea Telecom of South Korea. It was launched by a Sea Launch Zenit 3SL from the Ocean Odyssey platform on the equator at 3:27 Greenwich Mean Time on the 22nd of August 2006. The Spacebus 4000C2, which has a height of 4.5 meters (15 feet), generates 10.5 kilowatts (14.1 horsepower) of power. Five have been ordered, all using the ATAR free option by companies in the People's Republic of China. China's R, a state-owned company ordered two satellites, whilst the APT satellite ordered three. All were launched by Long March 3B rockets from Launch Area 2 at the Zichang Satellite Launch Center, eight Spacebus 4000C3 satellites, each of which has a height of 5.1 meters (17 feet) and generates 13 kilowatts (17 horsepower) of power, have been ordered. Says Americam and Utilsat ordered two spacecraft each. The Utilsat spacecraft are being built using ATAR free parts, and one of the satellites, Utilsat W 3B, launched on an Ariane 5 on 28 October 2010 and was declared lost on 30 October 2010 due to a fuel leak. Utilsat 21B was ordered by 9 June 2010. And launched the 10th of November 2012, Utilsat W3D ordered on the 3rd of December 2010, launched the 14th of May 2013. Russian satellite operator Gazprom also ordered two satellites for its Yamal satellite constellation program. The first time it had procured Yamal spacecraft that were not manufactured in Russia. Only one will be a Spacebus, the second one is based on an Express 2000 platform. The Spacebus 4000C4 bus is 5.5 meters, 18 feet high and can generate 16 kilowatts, 21 horsepower of power with its solar panels. Four have been ordered so far. SEAL-2 for SEAL Satellite of Canada, which was launched on the 10th of December 2008, and three spacecraft for Utilsat W-2A, W-7, launched by Proton on the 23rd of November 2009, and Utilsat 8 West B, ordered on the 11th of October 2012. Topic: <laughs> EKSPRESS 4000. On 6 December 2007, Thales Alenia Space signed an agreement with NPOPM of Russia to jointly develop the EKSPRESS 4000 bus, based on the Spacebus 4000. The EKSPRESS 4000 is designed for direct injection into geostationary orbit by a Proton M rocket. Spacebus NEO In 2014, Thales Alenia Space start the development of a new family, Spacebus Neo, to address future market needs capitalizing on the strong heritage from Spacebus, with the Avionics 4000 in particular, and from Alphabus, while also incorporating an optimized mechanical architecture to offer a product with guaranteed long-term viability. These new platforms will offer state-of-the-art technologies and will be available in various propulsion versions, including an all-electric one. The all-electric Spacebus Neo, capable of carrying payloads weighing over 1,400 kg, and with power exceeding 16 kW, will be available starting in mid-2015. See also List of Spacebus satellites 
Comparison of satellite buses